a very good morning to all of you how are you all i hope you all are doing fine happy to see you all so good so happy so lively and energetic keep it up children so let's begin our today's session that's evolution of computers part 2 okay i hope you all are sitting in a comfortable posture and i must have already kept a pencil and a notebook for noting down the important points that's great once again i would like to remind everyone children please write down your queries and doubts in the chat box we will discuss the queries and doubts before ending up the session thank you so much so let us begin our today's session okay the session is a continued session to the previous one which was about evolution of computers so we'll be complete taking up the same topic children the computer was born not for entertainment email music games only but out of a need to solve the serious number crunching crisis it was invented by the year 1880 the us population had grown so large that it took around 7 years by the us government to tabulate the census the government therefore thought of having something which would give them faster result giving rise to punch card based computers that took the size of entire room but these days today we are carrying more computers on our smartphones than was available in those early models this brief history of computing is a timeline of how computers are evolved from their humble beginnings to the machines of today that we use for surfing the internet for entertainment for playing the games for listening the music for creating our documents for creating our drawings for multimedia operations for movie making and many more in addition to just crunching the numbers computers to have proved the capability of solving vast array of problems from balancing a banking checkbook to even in the form of guiding system for robots like walking across a room so let's continue with our session on this note this is a brief recapitulation of the previous session charles babbage is considered as the father of computing he invented difference engine and analytical engine eniac was the first general purpose electronic digital computer while univac 1 was the first computer had the capability to handle both the numeric as well as the textual data then the different generations of computers were being formed on the basis of the circuitry involved in the different computers the first generation computer made use of vacuum tubes inside it while transistors transistors became the part of second generation of computers integrated circuits became the part of third generation of computers while in fourth generation microprocessor technology was used and it is getting used at the present as well in the fifth generation which is a present and the in the future to come we are using artificial intelligence as the technology behind it on this basis we've got numerous types and varieties of computers so here is a classification what we learned of different computers on the basis of their size cost speed and storage capacity the first the smallest size of computers are microcomputers also known as personal computers then the mini computers mainframe computers and supercomputers so today we are going to have a look how these different kind of computers work so then here it is a continuation to the previous session activity which i gave you to prepare a collage of different types of microcomputer here i have created one picture of it so you can either to create a same or you can create in another innovative way 
first i have shown the picture of desktop then it's a laptop pc netbook pc tablet pc pda is there pda stands for personal digital assistant then it's a smartphone that's a handheld phone right let's move on to the second type of computer that's mini computer as you can see on the screen here we can see there are five different computers attached to one cpu yes children this is the difference between micro and mini computer my each micro computer is completely suitable for one individual to work at the same at a time but mini computer can handle more than one users at same time how it is all the different nodes of mini computer are connected with one cpu see here as you can see this is the one cpu unit of all these five computers one two three four and five these five computers are being controlled by one system unit this is one cpu because this one cpu is responsible for accepting the instructions from five different units therefore it has also divided its task into two different units one is responsible for storing of data two is responsible for processing of data right so that's how mini computer work and that's how it gets the capacity to have to cater multiple users at same time right let's move on to the second generation sorry the second type of computer that is mainframe computer so then it's very clear from the picture that mainframe computers are very big in size which occupies the space of almost an entire room right as you can see here are different units this is an input output controller unit which is only responsible for accepting the instructions than for printing the output and for showing the results this is the one central processing unit this central processing unit is responsible for all the processing instructions processing activities this is one control unit being handled by this man and this is another control unit being handled by this user control unit is that interface from where user can type in the instructions once the user will type in instructions from this node or this node will go to this input output controller unit and then this will go to cpu who will understand process the instructions and then will produce the output and for producing the output it needs the data and after producing the output it needs the data to be saved also so therefore we need a unit which will capable which is capable of storing the data so here are those storing capacity units of mainframe computers magnetic tape units and this is the final disk storage area that means these two users are using the mainframe computer instructions are going to the input output controller then cpu is performing the processing part and then these magnetic tape units are actually storing the data coming and going out of the system and finally these magnetic tape units after the operation is over saving the data in this disk storage unit this is how mainframe computers work here is another picture of it you can see these magnetic tapes being used by these two users and here is a picture of the cpu unit as well this is how mainframe computers work now it is a picture of supercomputer this supercomputer has 10 million processor working inside it yes children you heard it right 10 million processors in our one super in our sorry in our one computer the laptop or a personal computer or a desktop computer there is only one processor but in the supercomputer 
there are around 10 million processors work together. Therefore, it has the highest capacity to store the data, to process the data, to accept the thousands of instructions at the same time from multiple users. Yes, children. And children, whenever the super, any machine, whether it is a supercomputer or it is a desktop computer or it is an ATM machine or it is a television or it is a microwave, even a refrigerator at home, it produces heat while working. So there are, you must have seen the outlet vents from where the heat produced inside it while operation gets out of it. Similarly, supercomputers has these vent from where that heat will be exhausted outside. Right? So that there will be no pressure of heat inside the supercomputer. You must have experienced the same in the ATM counters also that the, those ATM counters are so much, if they are not, if those counters are not ventilated, they are completely cool. There are so many air conditioners fit inside it. That's all. So this is how the supercomputer and the different kinds of computers work. I'm going to show you one video which will which will make you understand the evolution of computer in a more easier and comfortable way. Let's have a look of it. Computers have opened a magical world for us in the modern period. We use computers for various purposes like storing information, communicating and entertaining ourselves. So where did the computer come from? Yeah. Let's travel back in time to know the history of computers. Around 3000 years ago, people used the abacus to calculate complex sums. The abacus was the first counting device or the earliest calculator. It was used to add and subtract numbers. It consists of a wooden frame with rods, each having beads. Counting on the abacus is done by sliding the beads across the rods. It uses the age-old denary number system. Uh, we use computers for various purposes. I would like to mention that here the abacus device, what they are showing is different from what I had discussed in my previous session. Yes, children. They start, actually the calculating device, the calculations started with the use of abacus, but the abacus was also of different shapes and different forms. Right. This is the one different shape and form the, this presentation is talking about. Right. It's like storing information, communicating and entertaining ourselves. So where did the computer come from? Let's travel back in time to know the history of computers. 3000 years ago, people used to calculate complex sums. The abacus was the first counting device or the earliest calculator. It was used to add and subtract numbers. It consists of a wooden frame with rods, each having beads. Counting on the abacus is done by sliding the beads across the rods. It uses the age-old denary number system. The Napier's Bones then, in 1617, John Napier, a Scottish mathematician, invented a calculating instrument called Napier's Bones. Napier's Bones consisted of a set of rods with numbers written on them. It was used to multiply and divide numbers. The Pascaline in 1642, the Pascaline was invented by a French mathematician called Blaise Pascal. The Pascaline was the first mechanical calculator in the world. The Pascaline has wheels and gears. It was used for adding numbers quickly as the wheels and gears made calculations easier.
the Leibniz calculator. In 1694, Gottfried Leibniz, a German mathematician, invented the Leibniz calculator. Unlike the previous machines, the Leibniz calculator could add and subtract numbers as well as multiply and divide using wheels. The Leibniz calculator was considered to be a breakthrough in advanced calculation. The punched card In 1801, punched cards were first used by Joseph Jacquard, a French merchant in the weaving business to control a weaving loom. A punched card is a strip of card with holes punched into it. The tabulating machine in 1890, Herman Hollerith, an American statistician, invented a machine called the tabulating machine. Hollerith used punched cards to provide instructions to the tabulating machine and to store data. This method introduced the concept of storage devices, which led to the evolution of modern computers. Yes. The analytical engine in 1834, Charles Babbage, a British mathematician, designed the analytical engine and the difference engine. Charles Babbage is known as the father of the modern digital computer. The analytical engine could be programmed by giving instructions to it. So, as you could see from this video as well, the same things that Charles Babbage was known as the father of modern day computing because he was the one who had actually introduced the concept of storage as well as analytical, analytical capacity into the computers. So, now let's have a quick look on the important facts. Summit is the fastest supercomputer as of now in the world, right? Andre Trong Trong Thai, who is a French engineer, is known as the father of personal computer. Do you remember Charles Babbage is known as the father of computing, while Andre is known as the father of personal computer because he was the one who had actually invented the concept of circuits called microprocessor in the year 1973. Using these microprocessors only, the first microcomputer was invented by the name called Altair 8800. Yes, Altair 8800 was the first successful microcomputer having the micro-based technology circuitry behind it and it was microprocessor. Then moved on inventing the something new which could be easily handled which could be portable so then the first laptop was invented by the company named epson in the year 1981 and children the weight of that first laptop was around 24.5 pounds yes it's 24.5 you can see in this picture above i have just captured this picture. This is a picture of this first laptop. This picture can easily make you understand how heavy it could be. And you can see in this picture the screen size, the display screen size is only 5 inches. This is only 5 inches. Yes. Next you, I wanted you to have an idea about the series of supercomputers being designed by India. Yes, Param is the series of supercomputers being designed by India in Pune by the company called CDEC. And the latest invention in the series is Param Ishan. That is Param Ishan. Yes, that's right. This is a lab tutorial, children. As I gave you one activity previously here, I'm not going to give you any activity for home trust. I'm just going to show you the steps, how I want this small activity to be. And you may be able to do it like that. Let's do it. For this children, you need to have some pictures, some clip art, some shapes already there in your computer. This is about inventors and their inventions. Let me show it to you.
for this activity i have already downloaded few images related to this activity on my computer same you can also perform while practicing in case you feel like children i am making it very clear it is not a home task it is just an activity i wanted you to all have an idea about it you have to first insert a rectangle a big rectangle as you are creating a poster add a text in this how can we add just right click on this rectangle add text inventors or we can do it with the help of word art also let's do it with the word art it will look much better insert and then word art let's choose this their inventions i want let's just bring it down so that it should be clearly visible now i want to add a picture in this we'll go to insert as i told you that i've already downloaded few pictures related to this poster so i'm just going to add them via pictures option i've saved them on the desktop i am choosing the picture of blaze pascal it's here let's just align it i've done this using alignment tools also and now i want one more picture of this device also invented by blaise pascal that was pascaline it's here it's here right and let's just mark the year of invention as well to make it more clear and more knowledgeable year of invention i want to change the background color so i'm choosing this white background let's just mark the year it is 1642 so this is how children you are supposed to prepare this it's a small lab tutorial so same you can do on by having more pictures so then in most of new versions of microsoft office we are not we cannot find many of the clip arts so as we are working from our home so from there we can easily download the required pictures and save it in our computers and then we can use those pictures for our this activity right so let's resume to the session this is this activities okay i can see add the rectangle and fill the color in it by selecting the gradient option choose a desired word art style and insert the text as inventors and their invention that's what we did insert a text box a text box and apply the desired style and shape by using the format tab and then you need to type that text with respect to the pictures by using add pictures that's what i have done now we can save the file now it's time for the quick revision dash computers are used in schools homes shops etc are those personal computers or mini computers yes those are personal computers personal computers are used in schools home shops etc and the another name for personal computer is that's right micro computer dash was the first electronic digital computer was that edvac or eniac ENIAC was the first electronic digital computer. So the EDVAC was the first computer which was being invented, but by John Macaulay. But yes, it wasn't so successful. That's why, following the same footsteps, the same programming style, another computer was launched by name ENIAC. Yes, which got more successful acknowledgement than EDVAC got. 
Third is Boolean logic was invented by the scientist George Boole or Herman Hollerith. It was George Boole. Dash is the world's fastest supercomputer. Summit is the fastest computer. While Pascaline is the invention is one of the most important invention being done by Blaise Pascal. Tablet computers are type of personal computers. Sixth is dash circuitry is used inside the fifth generation of computers. Is it microprocessor or artificial intelligence? Yes, it is artificial intelligence. Point seven is Lady Augusta Lovelace is known as the father of computing. No, she was known as the as the first programmer. She was the one who actually started the programming using the binary code language being invented, which was invented by George Boole. Blaise Pascal invented the first computer. Yes, true. Blaise Pascal was the one who was behind the first calculating device named as Pascaline. So this is also false. Here, children, this is for you to enhance your knowledge. Children, please listen it very carefully. There is nothing in this that you need to note down. You need to write it down somewhere. It is only for your understanding, for your awareness, for the enhancement of your knowledge related to artificial intelligence and related to computer history. You're supposed to visit these links, right? Kindly note these links. Or you can click a picture as well. Yeah. The, the first link is talking about computer history, while the second link will help you to gain more understanding about artificial intelligence, which is there in the fifth generation of computer. Yes. This is a small request to your parents for that kindly drop in their valuable feedback and suggestion to the school authorities on the email id manavds at yahoo.co.in thank you so much i hope you had learned something from this session and you had enjoyed the session thank you so much have a great day